Fallout 4 is a game rated M by the ESRB. Hello and welcome back to more Steven Plays Fallout 4. On the last episode, we finally... started the Brotherhood missions? I mean, technically we've started them. I mean, we started them a long time ago. But all we had really done up to this point was board the Pridwin. Now, we're actually doing Brotherhood missions. Plus, we've got Paladin Dance in his amazing looking hat by our side. Um, also, <laughs> I had said like two episodes ago that I'm going to start pre-recording, but that actually has not happened yet. So I've, I've at this current point in time, looked at your comments uh, from last episode. I'm going to use them to help dictate what goes on for this episode. I'm going to start pre-recording really soon, but I've been really busy with a bunch of other stuff. And then also with, you know, just generally trying to recover from, uh, from my... My sickness. Now, uh, fortunately, I, I hadn't pre-recorded because a lot of the comments said I missed a holotape, so let's give it a listen. Word came down that the Army just unloaded the first batch of the uh, M42s this morning. I'd just leave that if I were you. I've only seen the specs for these little beauties on paper, so Private Bertram and I snuck down to take an early look. When I heard that the eggheads were designing a manned portable nuke launcher, I thought they were nuts. But they actually got the damn thing to work. And after seeing the real thing sitting right in front of me, I think they could be just enough to tip the balance of this war in our favor. I mean, can you imagine the look on the enemy's face when we get dropped into Anchorage carrying these babies? They won't know what hit them. It's a cool little extra piece of lore. I was also tipped off that uh, the technical documents that the Brotherhood needs was, uh, chilling in this desk. You can see it's just some papers. It has no weight, but a value of one. Obviously, we if we take them to the, um... the guy in the Brotherhood, he's gonna give us probably much more than one. Alright. That leads us to the next section of this map, which is the elevator. Dance, you coming? Can you can you fit in here? Because you're kind of a big dude in that big, bulky armor. Alright, whatever. Going up, or down, or wherever it is we're, we're heading. Just always aware of the challenge that awaits around the corner. The very long corner. Are we... Are we still inside? Yes, I, I still think we're inside. Doesn't seem to be anybody over here, but the hidden is moving around, so there's definitely some more super mutants on this floor. Taking all of the clipboards, because why not? Oh, wow. Okay, so I guess technical documents don't show up in the game until... Um, you do that mission, because I've never seen one before. Now they're all over the place. But that's fine. I mean, that's not really, um... It's not really a problem. There's quite a bit of debris here. Yeah, there's also some ammo and some... Ugh... Oh, bloody rib cage. We have to spray that one off with a hose. We don't have to identify anybody. We just take the rib cages and go. Okay, they uh they got to be pretty close by. Take this jet. A, a comfy pillow. Grab this stuff. I mean, you think of the super mutants as being stupid, but like that's not necessarily a stupid thought, you know, to sit around and, and think about, Oh, I wish there was a human I could kill. As opposed to being like, Human, bad! Gotta kill human! I mean, they're they're thinking about stuff like that. I don't know, we, we come from different worlds. See anyone up here? No one's up here. Green stuff? Okay, well, you're in power armor, so I don't know why I thought this would work. Alright, well, when they come up here, you deal with them. I'm gonna be looking around. Okay, we're good right now, we're good right now. Careful. That... almost worked. But then I moved at the last second. God, stupid, stupid railing. Alright, stand up. Uh, you keep doing your thing. Are there any up here? No, I don't think so. Alright, well then I'm gonna let Dance do his thing. Purified water. Oh my god, it is purified water. It's not, it's not a trick. Seems like the sort of thing that would be a trick. But it is not a trick. 
Don't hear any more shooting. Which means dance is probably down. There's a few on this level now. I'm in caution. Dance is back up. Dance is doing pretty good. I just, I didn't want to deal with it. Oh, it's funny. One toilet's got purified water and one's got dirty water. It's just humorous to me. Oh, hi. Sorry, didn't mean to shoot you. I thought you were a super mutant. They're dead. I helped. See, I, I thought when I, I wasn't hearing shooting anymore... Oh, God. When I wasn't hearing shooting anymore, that, that, that meant that Dance was down. But apparently Dance just got bored of shooting them or something. Which is really crazy to me. Anyway, we're supposed to be clearing out this area of hostels. And we're doing a good job so far. And by we, I mean... Paladin Dance! What the balls, man. Was that a missile launcher? Dance. Dance. Sounding all clear. They down there? <gasps> you know, I knew I'd kill myself with a Molotov, and I did. Alright, I'm pretty sure that the legendary super mutant warlord is the one that's right there, and he's the one that's got, like, the bajillion shooter missile launcher. But he's le he's leaving. He's leaving. So stupid. Oh wait, no! Did I kill the missile launcher, dude? Maybe. Oh, there he is. He's back! It's the guy down the hallway. Pretty sure, maybe. Yep, that's the guy! That's the guy who I do not want to get close to. How you doing, Dance? Someone died. Was it the guy that I wanted to die? I think maybe. Gotcha! Piece of crap. Legendary slow time! Because this guy is actually pretty powerful. Oh yeah! Slow motion! Okay, backing up. Alright, now I've read your comments, and uh, you said the stork is the best way to increase vats, which makes literally almost too much sense. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some, some hits in, and get my, my crit meter up. Look how, look how fast it goes, it's crazy! Like, I should keep this weapon around just to do crits. It's crazy, I've already, I've already got it built up, almost. There it goes, I have three crits ready. Three. Oh my god, that's nuts. Alright, so now I can switch over to any gun that would do a piss load of damage and be all like, what's up, son? Critical! And I have two left. That's crazy. Oh my god, that... I want to say, like, that breaks the game, because it doesn't break the game. It's just really good. Violent assault rifle, some ammo, Um... I Dance, I think this one's broken. Um, no, no... No, don't, don't shoot him, Dance. I think he wants to be a friend. Can you shake hands? Shake! No? No, no, Dance, Dance. Hold your fire, hold your fire. This one's different. This one... This one just wants to be... No! Okay, he's dead. Well, we tried. And we took his right foot bones. Uh... Yo, Dance. We... <laughs> you killed a guy that was just standing there. Excuse me, Paladin Dance. Look at this place. You must hate these mutants as much as I do. Why do you hate super mutants so much? They're responsible for the death of a close friend. A brotherhood knight named Cutler. So when you ask if I hate them, I say hate's too gentle a word. These monstrosities are just another example of man blindly taking a step forward only to wind up stumbling two steps back. I've been fighting for years, trying to put a stop to this madness. And just when I thought we were getting the upper hand, along come the synths. 
I've seen what these super mutants do to people. Can you imagine what the synths would do to us if they ever got the upper hand? It would be Armageddon repeated. And maybe the end of everything that we hold dear. <sighs> Look, I don't mean to bore you with my rhetoric. I just want you to understand how important these missions are. How could synths bring about our destruction? If the synths reached the point where they outnumbered mankind, how long would it take for them to decide we were no longer necessary? They certainly possess the capability to make more of their own kind, so we'd become expendable. And with Institute technology on their side, nothing could stop them. Not even the Brotherhood. It's a nightmare scenario almost too terrible to contemplate. Anyway, that's enough of that. What's important here is that you got the job done and secured these warheads. You should head back up to the Pridwin and talk to Maxon. I'm sure he'll want to debrief you as soon as possible. Dismissed. Alright. Speak to Elder Maxon. I can do that. Trash can. Bravo Team Testing Terminal. Let's see what these people were writing. Report 1. Things are getting tough around here. Brock has decided to split our men into two teams. I drew one of the short straws, so I ended up on the M42 Fat Man launcher team, while most of my buddies are sitting pretty upstairs with the T-51B suits. I can't even begin to describe what a ridiculous idea the M42 is. A man-portable mini-nuke thrower that a trooper in the field is supposed to deploy at close range. I've been poring over the schematics, and I have no idea how we're going to get this thing to throw a warhead far enough not to kill the soldier unlucky enough to be stuck with these death traps. We've stripped the warhead weight down as much as possible, but I think we're looking at this the wrong way. Instead of trying to reduce the warhead weight, we should try and amp the power on the thrower itself. I know that means adding weight to an already heavy piece of ordnance, but I don't think we have any choice. One of the guys suggested we try magnetics to push the warhead through like a railgun, but the power pack would need to be the size of a suitcase. I'll keep picking away at this problem and see what I can turn up. We lost two good soldiers this morning. They were on the surface testing an MIRV variant of the launcher when one of the warheads misfired and hit the ground right where they were standing. Poor bastards didn't even have a chance. We couldn't even find any re remains to send home to their folks, so Brock told us just to fill some cans with sand. I tell ya, that guy doesn't give a crap about us. He's just worried about the brass back in Washington giving him a hard time. I was in bed last night when I had one of those Eureka moments. I ran over to the night shift guys in the lab, swept all of their ideas on the floor, and started sketching my idea. They must have thought I'd lost my mind. Six hours and about 14 cups of coffee later, and I had it all mapped out. We'd use a small subcharge as a launching catalyst to catapult the warhead from the launcher. We'd have plenty of range, and the subcharge could be built into the warhead itself. Brock seemed to like the plan and gave us the go-ahead to prototype the device. I can't wait to try it out. It took the better part of a year, and over a hundred test firings, but the M42 is ready to ship uh, ready to ship out into the field. I can't believe I spent over a year on this single project. I feel pretty good knowing we're delivering a well-tested weapon to our own guys fighting overseas. Now that it's over, I suppose Brock will move on move us on to something else, but for now I'm going to spend the rest of the month packing up these warheads to ship off base. Once again, it's it's really neat that all of this was uh, all of this was added in here. Like you can find out about the fat man. I thought you said it wasn't junk. I thought you liked it when I picked up random stuff. Don't go changing on me. I just met you. I'm starting to get to know you. You know, we've got pretty differing ideas on things. You you seem to judge an entire uh, species or race by the actions of one. That's not completely fair. What's in here? Nothing? Are we? Didn't move in a little bit, but I, f I feel like we're done in here. Everyone's dead. We should go looking around, though. Mini nukes. And mini nukes that are waiting to be assembled. Okay, we got a few things. Stim packs. Gonna leave the desk fan. Kind of expecting a lot more mini nukes. Oh my god. So, this is what we were after a, an entire huge storage container of mini nukes that are all waiting to be used by the Brotherhood. And I mean, that's pretty cool. I'm assuming we can't open these, because <laughs> I could care less if the Brotherhood gets any of these. I, I just want them all for, for myself. Or to set the room on fire and, and set them all going sky high, but that's not going to happen because they're all in these, these crates. It's still neat, though. Like, just the extra little room here to show 
you know, oh, wow, you know, look at this storage room of all of the, the M42 either launchers or the nukes. Like, that's, that's still pretty cool. All right. So we're done here. I believe I saw everything I needed to see. I missed out on some of this random stuff. I guess I never went in this room. I missed out on medical liquid nitrogen dispensers. Tablespoon. I gotta be on the lookout for these, uh... Technical documents, because they're gonna start showing up all over the place now. There's a bunch of radios in here, too, which is a little... A little odd. Was I in here? I must have been in here, because I killed a guy. Oh, yeah, this was the room. Alright. Oh, God, there's a lot of blood. Oh, I never went over here. Turn the light on so I can see a little better. Uh... Bunch more radios. Seriously, more radios in this, uh... In this place than, than you normally see in... You know, probably several episodes. It's just kind of strange. Lager bottle, buff out. Sometimes there's little computers. Little terminals you can check in on. This stuff, but I don't see any right now. You didn't make it very far, did you, pal? Uh, alright. Pretty sure we're, we're good. I'm gonna head out here, and, uh, I'm hoping that there will be some sort of lift back to the Pridwin. But I have a feeling they're, they're gonna make me just teleport. Uh, excuse me, Maxon? Outstanding work at Fort Strong, soldier. What happens at Fort Strong now? Paladin Dance is supervising the transfer of the Fat Man warheads to the Pridwin. They'll provide quite an edge to our arsenal. I've also ordered a detachment to occupy the location, and use it as a staging area to protect the eastern side of the airport. All in all, you handed us quite a valuable location. Eh, it was a piece of cake. I'm glad you feel that way. Because it only gets more difficult from here. In order to bring the Institute to its knees, we need to use every weapon at our disposal. I try to supply my soldiers with the best. That's why I'm giving you these. Signal grenades can call a vertebrate to your location when you need aerial transport. Simply throw one to the ground, and the vertebrate will hone in on the unique electromagnetic smoke it emits. Once you're aboard, use the map on your pit boy to interface with the pilot's navigation system, so he'll be able to take you wherever you need. Where can I get more signal grenades? I'd use the supply I gave you sparingly. These devices are far more complex than a standard smoke grenade. Should you need more, you should acquire them from Proctor Teagan. Will the vertebrate stay and help me fight? I'm afraid I can't spare a fully armed gunship for this task. A standard transport will have to suffice. Of course. Nothing stopping you from using the door gun while in flight. The best weapon for survival out here is a pocket full of caps. Signal grenades are usually reserved for our paladins. In your case, you should be grateful that I'm making an exception. Now, I'm sure you're aware that Fort Strong was simply the first step towards the liberation of the Commonwealth. An even greater task lies ahead. By now, I'm sure you've deduced that our arrival in the Commonwealth wasn't coincidental. We're here because of a unique energy reading recorded by Paladin Dance's recon team. According to our scribes, the reading indicated a level of technology that only the Institute could achieve. The moment this information came to light, our mission became clear. The Institute, and everyone responsible for the creation of the Synths, must be eliminated at all costs. To accomplish this goal, we need to locate the Institute's headquarters. I've had our scribes meticulously searching the Commonwealth, but they've come up empty-handed. Hmm. Where do I start? I want you to get out there, and become our eyes and ears on the ground. You seem to have a vested interest in locating the Institute before we met, so I'm confident you'll travel in the right circles. If you discover a way in, I need you to report it to me immediately. Any questions, Knight? Any suggestions where I should look next? Whatever you recovered from the courser at Green Tech, you should bring it to someone who knows how to manipulate Institute technology. Perhaps it will allow you to unlock the mystery of their knack for teleportation. This information could be the final piece of the puzzle. The moment you learn anything concrete, you're to report it to me immediately. Is there anything else, Knight? Uh, nope. Not right now, Elder. Very well, then. Dismissed. Crazy, man. I've only really done, like, one mission for the Brotherhood, and Maxon's already talking about the Courser. Like, the Courser is really late. 
Well, a late error in the in the main story thing, and you have to know the railroad. So the fact that Maxon's already mentioning it is a little weird. Also, Dance left me, and that's strange. Like I, I don't know where Paladin Dance went. He was with me, and then he disappeared. And Maxon was like, he's overseeing the thing. You know, he's overseeing the whatever and I'm like okay well that's cool and all but the problem is he was with me and now he's not with me where the crap is he feel free to have a look at the specimens but please don't touch anything I refuse to be held responsible if you're injured are all these creatures yours well they're an important part of my research if that's what you mean I'm on the cusp of discovering how these creatures bodies have adapted to the radiation that's infiltrated their habitats if I can crack the code, I can equip our troops with a protective compound far superior to Rad-X. What do you mean, crack the code? The genetic code. The DNA sequences that are in every living thing. You see, the ionizing radiation left behind by the Great War kills because it damages most living things on a cellular level. However, after several generations, these creatures' bodies have adapted by altering their genetic makeup to prevent cellular disruption. I believe I've discovered how I can replicate that genetic restructuring rapidly. Instead of decades, I can do it in moments. For a short period of time, anyway. Why alter it for a short period of time? Why not do it permanently? Attempting to alter the genetic code permanently? That's too close to what happened with FEV and Spawn, the super mutant. I'm not willing to take a chance like that. I wish I could show you a sample of the compound. But unfortunately, I've hit a stumbling block, preventing me from synthesizing a sample. The specimens I've already captured can only produce so much blood and genetic material. If I try and harvest too much, they'll die. What I need are more samples of blood from the creatures roaming the Commonwealth. Will I get some of that new compound you're developing? If I make a breakthrough, you'll be the first person I give it to. After I've tested it on myself, of course. I've modified your Pip-Boy to scan the corpse of any freshly killed creature that has the proper type of blood in its body. All you have to do is pick up any viable sample and bring it back to me. Hey, I really appreciate you doing this for me. It's nice to know I'm not the only person in the Brotherhood with an open mind. Uh, okay. Sure. Mariah. Have you collected any blood samples, Knight? Will every creature yield viable blood samples? Unfortunately, no. Nature's stubborn, and unless I get the proper specimen, I can't use it to make my compound. That's why I needed to modify your Pip-Boy. It'll let you know if the creature has viable blood in its body. Have you had any luck finding samples yet? That depends. Are you still paying for them? Absolutely. I received the approval from Proctor Quinlan himself. Did you have any samples for me? Uh, m maybe? Yes, here you go. Is this some sort of a joke? I don't know what that is, but it certainly isn't a viable blood sample. Do you have any, or not? No, sorry. Keep trying. There's plenty out there. I really appreciate you searching for the blood samples. As soon as I make a breakthrough, I'll let you know. I met a new, uh, named character on the, the... Pridwin. See, I'm in, I'm in the process of, uh... Alright, alright. I'm in the process of still looking for, uh, Paladin Dance. I don't know where he is. I'm assuming he's on the Pridwin somewhere, but I haven't been able to find him. Got some logs here. Uh, Proctor Quinlan's teams continue to bring in samples to the local floor. They seem fairly corrupted by radiation, but some of them have promising properties, so we'll continue to study them. Our ultimate goal is to cultivate enough hybrids to increase our, uh, het heter heterotic... Is that what that is? Heterotic... Uh, yield. If we can do that, we may be able to cultivate the new species and create viable alternatives to our dependency on man-made resources. Commonwealth Plant Database. Oh, check this out! Tatoes! According to some old botany texts we found, this appears to be a combination of a now extinct plant called a potato and another extinct plant called a tomato. The outside looks like a tomato, but the inside is brown. Tastes as absolutely disgusting as it looks, but will keep you from starving. Oh, that's kind of sad. All right, I'm going to continue to walk around and, I mean, look, I, I'm look. Oh, you're a kid. Squire. I'm pretty excited. Tomorrow, I'm going to learn how to cauterize a bleeding wound. 
Neat. Oh, this is the this is the scribe's terminal. Um, personal notes. Let's check one of the personal notes. As we've been traveling towards the Commonwealth, I've been preparing my makeshift laboratory in the rear cargo hold of the Pridwin. When we arrive, Quinlan says he'll be sending out several patrols with the express purpose of collecting viable field specimens. My job is to oversee the dissection and study of anything the patrol brings aboard. I've always agreed with the notion that the quickest way to learn your enemy's weakness is by examining them from the inside out. I hope I don't have to wait too terribly long to put that notion to the test. Hmm, I'm not going to go through all of these right now. I'm still looking for Paladin Dance. He's got to be here. Oh my god, there you up, are. I've informed Captain Kells of your search for the missing recon team. Going forward, report your findings directly to him. Paladin. Ready to continue our mission, soldier? Yeah, I was never ready to let you go, baby. Ready. Roger that. All right. Wonderful. Okay, so now we're, uh... Thankfully, back in business. I've been looking around the ship a, a quite a great deal. Um, it there's... sounds like we owe you our gratitude for wiping out those monsters at Fort Strong. Now, did you have any documents for me? I or actually you were do. Interested in aiding a research patrol? No, 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 no research patrol. But here's some documents. I found some technical documents for you. Splendid. I'll put them to use right away. Here are the caps that I promised. Remember. The Commonwealth is an almost unlimited source for these technical documents. Check every building you explore during your patrols very carefully, and you might be pleasantly surprised at what you find. Quinlan looks like a character that stepped right out of Time Splitters. It also seems like these uh, technical documents are worth 25 caps each, which isn't bad. Now, you guys were saying in the comments that the patrols, uh, the research patrols, are never-ending. It's a infinite quest. I'll probably do at least one at some point to show them off. But, uh, I otherwise I will- I do not, uh, I don't plan on doing them all, because you can't. Let's see, Recon Data Listings, Hardware Town. Former retail location, very likely to contain useful scrap or raw materials. Oh, okay. Vault 75. It said sending location packet, but we've been to all of these places already. <laughs> well, maybe some other time. Pridwin, Internal Mail. Maxson. After we arrive in the Commonwealth, I want you to begin organizing sweep and retrieve teams. Take as many as you, many men as you need and coordinate the duty rosters with Lancer Captain Kells. I want as much information about these energy readings from Dance's team as you can find. We could be on the brink of discovering the location of the Institute, so this needs to be your top priority. Rise of Elder Maxson. Huh. These entries are my attempt at writing a timeline documenting Elder Maxson's rise within the ranks of the Brotherhood. It's my sincerest wish that these entries will one day be compiled in a classic printed book format and distributed throughout the wasteland. Long live Elder Maxon and long live the Brotherhood. Despite the defeat of the Enclave and the Cap of the Wasteland, the Brotherhood of Steel was still an organization divided. The Outcasts, a splinter faction that left the safety of the Citadel, still struggled to survive in the Cap of the Wasteland, separated from their parent organization. And while some of the Brotherhood members within the Citadel had no desire to reunite with their disgraced brothers, many saw the advantage in bolstering their own forces with warriors already trained and indoctrinated by the Brotherhood of Steel. Surely they could work out any philosophical issues? Enter Arthur Maxon, young squire to both Owen and Sarah Lyons, and descendant of the very founder of the Brotherhood of Steel, Roger Maxon. When Elder uh, Owen Lyons died, care of young Arthur Maxon passed to Sarah Lyons, Owen's daughter, who was then named Elder in his place. But when Sarah fell in battle shortly thereafter, things became complicated. The Brotherhood of Steel, based in the Citadel, uh, found itself in need of leadership and began appointing one ineffective Elder after another. As the years passed and Arthur Maxon grew, so too did his accomplishments. At age 12, while on a training patrol, he killed two raiders and saved the squad that was supposed to be escorting him. At age 13, he single-handedly killed a death claw and gained the large facial scar he still has to this day. But it was his victory at age 15 over the super mutant Shepard, who was attempting to reorganize the Capital Wasteland super mutants, that elevated him to hero-like status. When word of this feat reached the elders back on the west coast, they knew the time had come. Maxon was ready ready to lead and, more importantly, to reunite the fragmented Brotherhood of Steel Forces on the East Coast. Our new leader. So it was that, it was, so it was that, a year later, when he was only 16 years old, Arthur Maxim brokered a peace with the outcasts, reintegrating them into the Brotherhood of Steel, and proving he was a, as effective a diplomat as he was a warrior. 
Now reunited, the full force of the Brotherhood of Steel appointed Arthur Maxon as Elder, the youngest in Brotherhood of Steel history. Elder Maxon reigns supreme in the capital wasteland, and his authority and influence have been spreading across the eastern seaboard, thanks in no small part by the mobility afforded by the Pridwin. He is the full support of the elders back on the west coast who have proudly reported that they've begun eradicating cults that have popped up, worshipping Maxon as though he's some kind of god. Maxon himself is almost offended by the idea of being referred to as a deity, as it goes against everything he believes in. Arthur Maxon is happy to be one thing, the perfect human specimen, an example of everything a human being can achieve, assisted, even enhanced, by advanced technology, but still very much human. Um... Little preachy, little crazy, little weird. Not really my, uh, not really my style. Welcome back. I heard about the apparition at Fort Strong. Any injuries that require attending to? Ooh, what's this? What you got here? I'm gonna play it. Medical report, Knight Captain Cade reported. I've been working closely with Scribe Naraya, examining some of the synth bodies that our recon teams have recovered. Even though we have yet to recover the synths that appear completely human, these lesser models are still astoundingly advanced. What's becoming apparent is that the Institute is the most technologically gifted enemy we've ever encountered, and therefore, exceedingly dangerous. I've turned over all of my data to Lancer Captain Kells, along with my recommendations for developing effective countermeasures for these synths. Unfortunately, I'm not sure how much it will help, given the fact that the real enemy are the synths that could be hiding among us. Oh man, everyone is, uh... Everyone's really... Good to see you again, Knight. Anything I can do to help? Everyone's really paranoid. There was one comment last episode that said I should really check out, um... Cade's... Uh... Terminal, because it talked a little bit about dance. Paladin Dance. Patient symptoms included inability to sleep and a dull throbbing pain in head. All standard tests are negative. Evidence suggests post-traumatic stress disorder or similar issue. Until severity of issue uh, increases, recommend voluntary removal from active duty. Patient was informed, but is currently in the field. Oh no, but he... he went back. And there's stuff about Proctor Ingram. Tegan. Uh, this guy died. Engineering Scribe Ostrich. Hmm. And then there's a bunch of... There's a bunch of mail, but I'm not, I'm not gonna read every single little bit of, uh, of mail. With a few minutes left in the episode, I think it would be in our best interest to maybe get out of the Prid one, because we've been in here already so much. Let's look at the quests here. Pick up the dead drop, return to Ver <laughs> we're not doing that. All aboard, taking point. A lot of the people in this area uh, have quests for us, we just haven't picked them up. But we've had one quest for freaking forever! And it's the Lost Patrol! Investigate the satellite array. Reeb Marina. Well, that's where we're going. Follow the radio distress signal, help defend Green Top Nursery. You're asking way, way, way too much of me, man. Doggone. Alright, so let's see. First things first. Um, where I'm trying to go... ...is... Investigate- oh, okay, so I have to follow the radio distress signal here. Got it. Radio distress signal. Okay. <laughs> Autosave wants to freeze the game. As it tends to do. I'm assuming we gotta head this way, right? Because aren't we just trying to go to that satellite array? Oh, there's enemies. Wonderful. Um, and a death claw. Cool, cool. Let the death claw go after them, man. There's there's no reason. There's no reason to get this thing's a ten. Shun. Now that happened. All right. Um. Can't seem to get on top of this. I wish I could fly. The death claw is almost dead. Who's got the Who's got the missile launcher? Where is it? Someone, someone has got the missile launcher. I wish I would have figured it out while they were shooting at the uh, the death claw. There's an overlord. Which one of you is the missile launcher? Can't really tell. Zero chance to hit. Well, a minute ago I had 20% and I've got crits, baby. Doggone it. Well, I'll go for the arm. 
<laughs> he did not appreciate that, did he? Not a little, not even a little bit. Three X damage. As soon as they realize we're here, there's going to be missiles raining down on us. Also, there's something behind us. Oh, good. Oh, Jesus! Time to go, go, go! Woo wee! Oh, fart. All right. Sigh in the narrow! Ugh. God, the thing works good. Who's left? The Overlord. Let's go for head. Critical! God, I bet that hurt. Holy crap. This thing is great. All right, switch back over to this thing. Get this up a little bit. Go over to this guy. Can't really hit from very far away, unfortunately. I need some more AP. Don't stand close to the cars. It's a good way to die. It's a good way to die. Dan, you okay? That bug get ya? You need some bug spray, fella. All right, I'm close enough to do this again. Your head is gonna be so badly damaged. I'm not close enough to actually get the hits in. When I get the hits in, the crit meter jumps way up. But if I don't get the crits in, I guess it doesn't matter. I have so much stupid ammo for this gun. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Let's move up. I need to get a, uh, a higher percentage of shots off. Hey, friend. And... Oh, your head doesn't even have anything, like, left to hit. Get a few more in here. And now is when we abort. We switch back over to last minute. We aim for your head. There we go. Zero. Why is it zero? Turn around. Critical. Boom. Done. Your head exploded. Oh, what a beautiful system. What a beautiful friggin' system. Use the stork, which gains AP like a madman, to store your critic, your criticals, and then once you once you got them all set, then you just switch over to your crazy gun, and you're good. Something just blew up. Not sure exactly what. Too scared to exit vats to find out. Not doing enough damage. Something behind me. God. Careful, 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 careful. Standing behind trees. Someone's got like a big old gun too. I need to be careful. This guy. What are my odds of hitting? Doesn't matter what I shoot. Just trying to gain... Oh, he's... Stupid guy. Left arm instead. There we go. Crit meter rising. I right, got one crit already. Almost up to two crits. Yeah, someone's got a, uh, some sort of stupid rifle or something. One of my next perks should really be, um, making my AP come up a little bit faster, because that would be helpful. Nice, that guy's dead. Didn't mean to kill the fun, but I killed the fun. Can I hit that guy from here? A little bit. Alright, got two crits in the bank. Speaking of bank, critical banker. Let's... Let's roll. Are you the Overlord? You're the Overlord? Cool. Critical. Done! Oh my god, this can be abused. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. There's so many Overlords here, and it's probably because I'm already at such a ridiculously high level. Don't move, honey! Oh my god. I love this so much. Ow! Jerk! All right, we got the Revere Satellite Array. Gonna go ahead and reload this. Switch over to my, uh... My Crit Riser. That's a new name for this weapon. Where are you? There you are, my precious! Little old Warlord up there! I think you might actually be more difficult than the, um... You might be more difficult than the Overlords, I'm not sure. Not doing a great job hitting you. Need to do better. Ow! Careful, can you see me? Fortunately, not here. Now, I gotta be careful. I get close to this guy. I could still die. I mean, he's... I'm not... I'm not invincible. I'm just trying to sneak up on him a little bit. Can I shoot him from here? If I can, that's great. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, you don't even know. You don't even know you're giving me free hits on you. They're beautiful. There's two. I'm just earning them right and left. Oh my god, I almost, I almost have three ready. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the last one. And... It's, uh, thanks, pal. You're great. Alright, now that that's all set, got three crits in the bank. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Head! Critical! Oh, don't run away! <laughs> Dance- Ow! Jerk! Head! Critical! Still not dead. I'll finish this off. This is where I die. Just walk up and get shot, I'm sure. Oh, I wanted him! No fun, Dance! What'd you have on you? You had a missile launcher, you just weren't using it. Strange. Okay, what's... Nothing over here. This is... Very scary, I do not have power armor to, uh... Save me from a really terrible fall. Oh, there's power armor up here, that's cool. This isn't safe at all. We need to find some cover as soon as possible. Okay, well, Dance, you need to take this fat man. That's what you need. Super Mutant Leg Armor. It's kind of cool. Dance. Hey. You point, I shoot. Get that. Take that weapon. Affirmative. Like, and also, why wouldn't you? It's a friggin' giant weapon. Take it. Thank you. Also that. Grab that. I'm on it. And, uh... I can't make you get in power- Like, you're already in power armor. That doesn't make sense. Okay, these- Oh, lord. Yeah. God, I'm I'm I have a fear of heights to some extent, and uh, it doesn't play into video games as much as my fear of being underwater does. Like that fear plays into video games pretty badly, but the the height one doesn't. But when you're on these tiny little things up in the air, like that's that's messed up. All right, it's got to be in here. Here it is. Follow tape. He was with the recon team. All right. Hollow tape. Got it. Okay, finally. And the distress pulser, which is there. Good lord. Now, before this episode ends, let's go ahead and listen to uh, Ferris's, uh, <laughs> Ferris's day off. Ah! This is Ferris. It's been two hours since the paladin left. My leg. I can't staunch the bleeding. Uh, the bullet must have hit an artery. Brantis, if you get this, I hope you made it back to Aslan in time. There was nothing you could do for me. Uh, get to the bunker up north. You will survive. That's all that... Uh, all that matters. They must have come to the satellite array for the comm system. Probably trying to send word back to the Pridwin. They were ambushed. Ferris was wounded. Couldn't walk. He got a distress signal. And Brandis left him behind. He broke the first rule of small group tactics. Stick together. Always stick together. They all wound up alone, and they all got killed. Damn it. That just leaves Brandis. He always was a survivor, but after all this time... The tape mentioned a bunker. I think I know the one. It was part of my original mission brief. Let's move out. All right, we have somewhere new to go next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Join me next time when we continue on the Lost Patrol. <laughs> a, a quest that we've literally had in our to-do list for over 100 episodes. Finally, we can finish it up next time. See you then for more Stephen Plays Fallout 4.